<clears throat> Jai Bhagwan, Women Warriors, and welcome to the Ayurvedic Woman Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Satyavani, and my co-host, Prajna Madhavi. Woohoo! Yes. You have no idea <laughs> what we had to go through to get this podcast <laughs> recorded today. You I mean, cannot do it alone. You can't. You can't. And ironically, our podcast today is about female power circles. Um, why you can't do it alone, why you need them, what they really should look like, um, what they don't look like, and um, the value they bring in your life. But like we're trying to do every single week, the podcast will first start out with a wellness check-in, and, and we're going to broaden wellness today. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Um, to me, like <laughs> not only just our physical wellness and mental, emotional, spiritual wellness, but just like Oh my God, girl, like what the fuck, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so exactly. What the hell happened today for you? Uh, yeah, so today I had, uh, I have this backflow issue. So it, not everyone has one, but if you have a black uh, backflow, you have, um, supposedly you have to get it checked. And I, so I decided to get it checked. And so <laughs> whatever, that's and, another and, whole deal. And like, like, my question is this, how did you, come to understand that that was even a thing. Oh, so I got something. I had never heard of that <laughs> until you told me this. So I got something in the mail. Oh, Jesus. And, and yeah. you read it. Yep, I read it. My little Vata brain said, oh my God, what if I don't do this? <laughs> They're gonna turn my water off. Oh my God, what might happen? <laughs> they freaking sucked you right <laughs> they, in. They did, uh, we could lesson learned. Uh, so, so yeah, they sucked me in. And so I called, called the plumber and said, you know, uh, Chris, the plumber, right. dude. and Chris. so I was like, "Do we really have to do this?" He's like, yeah, "Yeah, I know a guy. If you're gonna do it." So I called the company, and they said, "Okay, so when we come out there checking in your neighborhood, we'll just get it done. We'll leave a little note on your door, and perfect. There we go. So no problem." So Wednesday, I get my little note on my door, and they say, "You know, there was a problem with the backflow. We couldn't test it, so you need to call such and such company." So then I call such and such company. Now, and for the record, your house was built when? Uh, 1935. Okay, so 1935. So. And is the cutest yeah. 615 square feet? 612. 612 square mm -hmm. feet. Itty bitty. It's before tiny houses were actually a thing. Mm -hmm. So it is like the cutest thing ever. So it was literally, it's what you really need. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Love it. Um, at least for me, right. single person. Uh, so that, you know, called the company, they were great. Um, you know, actually a friend of mine works for the company. So she's like, yeah, we can get it. We can get this fixed. No problem. Uh, well then today, so on Wednesdays when they checked the backflow today, I was like, wow, it does, nothing looks like it got watered today. So I looked around and I checked my sprinklers and I'm like, I, they didn't go off today. Um, check the manual, you know, put it on manual, see if they'll run nothing. So I checked, I called the guy who blows out my sprinklers and he said, well, one, the whole backflow thing, he had his opinions on that, right. but he said, so he's having were me they take- Were they strong opinions? They were, <laughs> okay. they were a bit strong opinions. Okay. So he's having me take all these pictures. I have like three irrigation boxes in my front or water boxes, plus the backflow piping. And I'm like, I don't know what you want me to take a picture of, but. I'm willing to learn. Oh, so I'm taking all the pictures. Taking all the boxes off and, you know, encountering spiders or whatnot. And I take a picture of everything. And he's like, okay, now back up and take a picture of everything. Okay, so I do that, send it to him. And he's like, well, okay, here's your thing. You have two levers. One of them is perpendicular where it should be parallel to the piping. He's like, I think that's your problem. He's like, go out, turn that, and you should be fine. So I go out, I try to turn it. I've been working out a little bit, but... Uh, yeah, that, pretty thing good was, that thing was not budget. <laughs> but this is the thing, like, if it wasn't like that in the beginning, the person who did the backflow thing must have used he must a have. major device yeah. to secure that thing. And if he couldn't even, if he said that he couldn't even test it, I don't know why he didn't just, they're supposed to put everything back as they found it. I called the company and Scam said, alert. yeah, I called the company and said, just FYI, this is what happened. Like your guy came out and now my water doesn't turn on. So I'm just saying, I think there's a connection here. So I'm just making you aware. <laughs> You're very of, kind. I'm like, I'm not, what a I'm not speculating. See me, I would have been like, 
Okay. I'm being the witness. Okay. I'm just witnessing that this is what happened. And I'm giving you the information. So it's so good. And I'm I figure I'm I'm learning in the process, but I really wish I didn't have to pay the money to learn these lessons. Absolutely. But that's what I'm doing. So hopefully the landscaper guys gonna come out today and reaffirm that like yes, this lever is supposed to be this direction, we're gonna fix that, we're gonna so. And you can water your lawn again. And I can hopefully water my lawn again tonight. Hopefully. So when do they come home? I uh, I told them I had to do this. Okay. I had an appointment until about four fifteen. Okay. So, so yeah. okay, we got a little bit of time, yeah. but we gotta get That's this going here. Yeah. How about you? How's your day? Oh, uh, so speaking of, you know, it, like shit just goes on, yeah. you know, in, in life. So we were attempting to record this podcast this morning. We have um, two mics, they weren't syncing to the computer, we watched all the friggin' YouTube videos, and then finally I was like, I, we're not going to do this right now. I'm going to contact Tim, Tim, uh, who handles the podcast editing and is my photographer. And thank you, Tim Bryant, for everything it is that you do. And I was like, Tim, I need your help. And so he got on his motorcycle and he jumped down and uh, got over here and then told us that the two mics that we have don't sync together because they're not of the same um, bit. bit size. Bit size. Now, for the record, folks, I'm actually pretty technologically savvy. Like, yes. it process my witness. And so I'm like, what the hell? So we now officially have the, 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 large, uh, <laughs> the large version of the microphone for both of us today. And so now yeah. I have to buy another one. But thank you, Tim, for, for saving us so that we can get this recorded today. And in all of this, I think the lessons, again, what we're talking about mm -hmm. today is you can't do it alone. No. Like, you need help with certain things. Yes, you do. And if you're open and willing to become educated about it, yes. like, okay, now I know more about what is backflow, <laughs> what do the levers do, like, what should it look like? Like, if you're open to learning those things, yes. not saying that I'm going to go do that on my own uh, again, no. but, like, you learn something from that experience. And we learned a lot from just listening to Tim, Right. if it's setting up our set today exactly i know i yeah. was just like we gotta get this set organized yeah and so tim thank you for all of us yes. um, for helping us out but a thousand percent F female power circles um but outside of backflows and bad mics um how you feeling this week what's uh what's the wellness check-in uh it's been kind of up and down okay um but I, i'd say better than last week Excellent. it's been i feel like i'm kind of getting out of that kind of spring funk, uh, whatever that I was in. Um, not that it, it wasn't bad, but I feel like this week I'm a little more steady, a little more motivated, uh, but taking those kind of rest periods as I need them. Um, so, today I got a workout in. I can't say that it was an amazing workout, but I got something in today. Hey, you showed up. Yep, yep. showed up. Mm -hmm. And um, how about those booty exercises? <laughs> oh God, there's that. Well, yeah. She is doing these booty exercises. She's like, girl, you gotta do these. And so she's teaching me these booty exercises Great. yesterday with bands. They're miserable. <laughs> They're absolutely miserable. So to fire up the glutes. Yeah. Yeah, like I have no glutes. Like I, I thought I had glutes and I have no glutes. Um, I have one Maximus and that's about <laughs> it. So I got told that you really need to work all of your glute muscles. So if you sit a lot, you're probably in the same boat. Or stand a lot. Like or stand a lot. Yeah. So yeah, it really doesn't matter what mm -hmm. you do. If you're not firing the glute muscles, you're not firing the glute muscles. So right. yeah. So, you know, really shout out to physical therapists out there. The, the good ones that are, you know, doing the thing and actually giving me those specific exercises. Because again, you can't do it alone. No, you can't. Like I could have watched videos on how to maybe do those exercises, but mm -hmm. until I actually walked into an office and they did, you know, a short assessment absolutely of what I was lacking in mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't get the real specific ones that I needed so well the other part of that also is that um, <coughs> excuse us well, see it's true yeah um, the other part of it also is that you actually went in there for your knee mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then this whole world opened up because my knee can't do it alone either your knee can't do it alone either and the fact that you actually went in there for your knee um you're like oh this knee issue and then 
find out actually it's the glutes because then the glutes attached to the piriformis goes around, you know, wraps around through that quad, goes down to the knee. And you were also saying that you had some tibia pain. Yep. And so now- Because I have no calf muscles. Because she has no <laughs> calf muscles. So now we're working calves and, um, and uh, glutes. And yeah. so I have a feeling that the knee is gonna heal itself very quickly. It's, I'm feeling it already. It's kind of a game changer. It's, yeah. I just feel different activation. Yeah. It's awesome. I'm in excited. Like, in like two days, mm -hmm. which is great. Yep. Love it, love it. And uh, yeah, similarly, I would say this, uh, this week, I got my mojo back. Mm -hmm. Like last week, it was like, woo! Yeah. And um, you know, my trainer, shout out to August Ritter. Mm -hmm. He is like, you know, you gotta take a break. Um, and I took his advice and he's like, and I know that's hard. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very difficult for me to take a break from, from training. But uh, it was been training like an athlete. And athletes, yeah. after the Olympics, they probably take some time off. They absolutely do. Um, they so, do. so, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was good, and what was great is that um, went to you know we lifted this week. We did a lot of outdoor stuff. Uh, did some trial runs with uh, with my girls, um, and also went to Krav this week. And it was great. We went back to a lot of foundational stuff, a lot nice. of foundational striking, a lot of foundational kicking. Mm -hmm. And um, we're gonna get you back there. I know we're gonna get you back. I love there. that stuff. Yep, it is. It was great. So it was good. It was a good kind of reset week, I think, for both of us. Yeah. Which was great. And then um, the cold plunge. We're cold plunging it. Yeah. And uh, we cleaned out the cold plunge. Oh, cleaned God. it out this oh, week because I watered my lawn. <laughs> cold plunge. She cleaned out. Like took her an hour and a half. I'm like, how did it take you an hour and a half to clean out the cold plunge? And she's just like, you don't want to know. Well, I put it in buckets and then I was watering my lawn with it. I'm like, girl, just dump it on the lawn. Mm -hmm. So, yep. But again, information lessons learned yep and had i not done that my lawn would be very thirsty right you know now. what there you go yeah there's always a silver lining in this stuff. yeah so the purpose of our podcast today is to really talk about female um power circles and um really what what does that look like how as women do we get into develop cultivate female power circles and mm -hmm. um, one of the things that you and I have discussed many times before, and we've both learned a lot with um, the Ayurvedic Woman program and also the Ayurveda 108, is a lot of women say that they have difficulty with being in groups with women. And that is a very, very common thing. More common than women actually want to necessarily reveal. Yeah. Um, and so we have this concept and I'd love for you to share your experience Praj about you know why why we need them we understand that we can't do things alone mm -hmm. um, whether it's you know dealing with bag flow podcast equipment your glutes you know whatever the case may be you need a team you have to have a team and you have to have and I, I would say in my opinion you have to have a reliable consistent team mm -hmm. where you're holding me accountable, I'm holding you accountable, and and not in that way of like, well, I'm kind of holding you accountable, but I don't want to hurt your feelings, you yeah. know, et cetera, et cetera. You sent me a, a meme on Instagram the other day. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to share what that was? <laughs> I've sent you some many, I don't remember which <laughs> one. It's actually pretty funny. <laughs> but the, the one that was just like, you want the person who, you know, sometimes might hurt your feelings, but oh, is yeah. always going to tell you the truth. Yep. Yeah. And. And I think we need more of that. You know, mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of women's circles out there that can tend to be, um, how should I say, I guess, catty in mm -hmm. nature, or they just surround one another during superficial kind of quote, good times. And not like, and not to say that women don't rally for other women when they're having difficult times. Mm -hmm. But when, when you see a sister slipping I think that there are more women that are hesitant to say like girl like what's going on yeah like what's happening so go ahead talk to me about that like why we can't do it alone and why we need these power circles yeah so as just as you were talking about that I was actually I don't know what popped into my head was uh, and what I've thought about is sort of like a, a business and thinking about okay you have specialization 
in a business, and I'm not here to say that specialization is the answer, but mm -hmm. if you're looking at, you know, like the situations we had today, you have one individual who is maybe um, better at this one particular thing than someone else, totally. and, you know, you are going through a tough time, and this person, you know, has that type of specialization or is good in that particular way, then you maybe, you know, you need that person in your life. And, you know, that meme, the reason why I sent that to you is that meme spoke to me because you are that person essentially for me. You. Now, you also do it in a way where you kind of let me come to my own conclusions <laughs> um, before you just say, girl, like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and I, and I think that is because of the work that we do. Like, we, we really try to focus on coming to those conclusions on our own. Uh, but, you know, I think you do it in a way, you know, you talk about holding space and um, you do allow people to come to their own conclusions and then say, huh, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Why, do you, why do you think that is? Uh, so, and that actually happened case in point, you know, when we were in the locker room the other day and we were talking about a certain individual and I was like, you know, I feel like I, I'm kind of still competing with that person for some reason. Mm -hmm. And also what you said about why it's hard for women is, and I know we've had this conversation before, is Definitely. the competition factor. Completely. Um, we have in this, in our mind, in our mindset yep. that we are competing for a man, something, right. a man, a job. A job. Um, and it gets in our head that like, yep. I don't- Or another woman. Or another depending woman. Depending on what your orientation yeah. is. Absolutely. So we are competing in some way with that other individual. Um, We're actually raised that way. Yeah. You know? And I don't think a lot of women really want to admit that mm -hmm. or see that, but if if we, I'm reading this book right now. There's a reason why, why it's there. It's not like we choose that on our own. Thousand percent. I want to compete with, exactly. <laughs> be catty with other women. Like, Completely. Yeah. Michael bought me um, this book I share with you. It's called Naked Feminism. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it, there's a variety of stuff and topics in there. But one of the things um, that really comes in loud and clear is she does kind of a historical perspective on women and how they, they grow. And, and this is specifically about feminism and women's you know gender, um, sexuality, and, and things like that. But one of the things that does come through is this conversation about women in in very traditional ways. And, and when I say traditional, I'm not just saying like traditional cultures. I'm saying that traditions about women have existed throughout history and in a variety of different cultures. They might be slightly different, but a lot of them are the same. And one of those is the idea of women are raised to do certain tasks. And the responsibility of, quote unquote, a responsibility of that woman is the father and the mother when they're growing up. But then there's this kind of replication of the woman then being raised by the mother and the father to be a certain way. And then she becomes the quote unquote um, job or task of the husband that she you know, marries, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, there's a variety of different combinations as it relates to you know, women, lesbian women and all that kind of stuff. I'm just kind of talking historically straight off the cuff kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, I know that there's nuances, but the, and it's, it's fascinating to see how like part of that quote unquote training is, oh, my purpose is then to snatch a mate. Mm -hmm. And so I can perform those roles bingo. for that individual. Exactly. Yeah. A and learned behavior. It is. And so it is, it is a learned behavior. It is a learned pattern. Mm -hmm. And even though in, you know, Western culture right now in today's day and age, you know, women are, they're not necessarily doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not being raised to just perform domestic tasks in order to snag a guy, et cetera, et cetera. You know, they're in the marketplace, they're entrepreneurs, they're, you know, athletes are doing all sorts of different things. But there is this kind of intergenerational DNA mm -hmm. that 
they are carrying with them. And so what comes from that? Now we have this modern day, um, I'm not only, I'm not necessarily competing for a mate, but I'm competing with you. You know, you're taller than I am, so I have to be smarter or you're prettier or, you know, whatever the case may be. And then there's this, this subtle competition that women have with one another for really ridiculous reasons. Yeah. That actually has really nothing to do with us. Yeah. And that what we're trying to do in this, you know, this idea of what we really want women's circles to look like is like, when you succeed, I fucking succeed. Yeah. And when I succeed, you succeed. And like, enough with the bullshit. Ugh. To bring it back maybe even to that, that business analogy, yep. okay, look at like an assembly line. Like every part in the assembly line has a special, a specialized task. A thousand percent. You take one of those out, things don't flow. Nope. And you don't have those specific pieces competing no. to do another task with each other. Right. Otherwise the it wouldn't work. The was like, I want to be a nail. Yes. And it's like, I want to no. be a nail. Yeah. It's like, no, not really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we- That's a great, great analogy. We actually. have found this beautiful, you know, uh, well, okay, maybe not beautiful, but very effective system in the assembly line that works, makes things work smoothly and faster. Yeah. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the right way to do it, but you know, relationships and roles that women play could be very similar to that. If you're competing for the same thing right. as someone else, um, neither one of you is really, I mean, one of you maybe wins, but- Whatever that means. Yeah, right. whatever that means. Right. And I also think that what those circles really need to look like, and you know, that's part of our mission with what we're doing, is not just women supporting women, but also like wanting women to thrive in their own way. Yeah. I don't want you to be like me. You don't want me to be like you. Um, I. It's not possible. <laughs> it, 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 it really isn't. It really isn't. Um, I will never be five foot ten. It's just never going to happen. Um, but your talents contribute. Yeah. My talents contribute. Um, you know, Whitney's talents, Gianabati's, Doc Sheena's, mm -hmm. um, you know, GT's. Everybody's talents contribute to, and we should be supporting that. Mm -hmm. We should be cultivating what those talents are. That's exactly. Which right. is the Dharma, the Dharma piece. Yep. Cultivate what you are meant to do right. on this earth. And and that's why like and also within those circles, there's kind of two plays that are happening. One is the self-examination because everything has to start from within. Like, who am I? Like, what is my dharma? Am I the roles that my parents placed on me? Am I? Yeah. Yep. Once and what's happening is that like as we're figuring that out, then there's this like periscope of like boop 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 like. Oh my God, I'm figuring this out, but I also have to keep my eye on, you know, first, second, and third base to make sure that, you know, this other woman isn't stealing home before I get there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's fucking exhausting. So like, while you're working on yourself, you should be able to be in a circle that you're not only working on yourself, but collectively, it's like, I don't have to worry about that because I know that the women who are on first, second, and third base are all there waiting for me to succeed and to grow onto my arm. When I catch the softball, I'm gonna throw it to first base, they're there to catch it. Exactly. Yeah. Rather than just like, oh, am I gonna get tagged out or mm -hmm. you know, something like that. And I think a lot of women have difficulty being in circles of women because A, there's the competition factor, and B, they don't necessarily feel fully supported for who it is that they are. It's like, well, you can be in our circle, but you gotta act like us. And that's why like, I always find it hysterical. At the ripe age of 49 now, I can now go out to dinner or in some social engagement and see young women gathering and they're all dressed identically. They all have the same exact hairstyle. They're all, they all have their same exact cell phone. Their you know, profiles on Instagram might as well be identical. And it's like, oh, yeah. What is happening? Why? <laughs> Why is this happening? So, very interesting. Yep. What value do you think women power circles bring? Like, we can even talk about like 
the, the AWP, like what's cultivated in there. But like, I'm curious what your thoughts are on like, what is the value? Cause I get that all the time. It's mm -hmm. like, well, why should I join the, the 108? Why should I, you know, read Paint to Power? Why should I join the I Write Woman program? Why should I hang out with you people? Yeah. <laughs> I think we, we bring uh, integrity comes to mind, Ooh. first off, nice. uh, because we show up for each other, there is, an, integrity is probably one of my favorite um, words and the meaning behind it, I think, uh, is, you know, integrity, the fact that, you know, we show up for each other, we know each other is going to be there, um, we let each other know when we're not, like that kind of integrity that, yep. um, that accountability piece of it as yep. well. Yep. Uh, a sense of fulfillment and wholeness when you have a group uh, that is all, you know, working toward a similar goal. Mm -hmm. um, you you start to feel, you know, I'm infinite, eternal, and whole. You can tell yourself that, yep. but you may not necessarily quite believe it yet. But when you start getting in a group yep. of women who are believing that about themselves, and also reflecting it back to you, reflecting like, it back like to like you, this is what I see. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we don't always see ourselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what other value do they bring? Um, thinking about the groups that I've had, uh, being able to, or the groups that I've been in, uh, being able to be honest with each other. Yep. And not, not bullshit each other. Mm -hmm. uh, not say, oh, that's okay that you didn't do that. Like, no, it's actually it's not okay. fucking not. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know it's not. Don't tell me it's not, because I know it's not. You're just trying to make me feel better. Yep. And But we t tend to seek that out when yep. we want that kind of cop out or that, you know, we've maybe all had those friends that are like, no, I'm going to go talk to this friend because they're going to tell me what I want to hear yep. um, versus, you know, what I really need to hear. Um, so Which are two very different very things. Different things. Mm -hmm. Yet we choose to go to that person for some reason, yep. um, you know, depending on where we're at. Um, so... It's a little bit of an ego stroke there. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. But going to the person who's going to give you the real—that that's hard. It is. That's hard work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which and then kind of brings back to that integrity. Mm -hmm. You want to be that person of integrity that you're going to hear the hard stuff because you know you have to. Yep. Or that person like, no, I'm going to go to the friend who's going to tell me it's okay. Right. Um, because you still need that from time to time. Sure. But, so. Yeah. What about you? What values? Well, one of the big, I would say one of the words that I feel um, that these women's circles bring um, is also a, there's authenticity and there is vulnerability. Mm. Vulnerability is a big word these days. Mm. Um, I think that there's a lot of women that put up a wall and that I believe is also a learned behavior. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> not at all. Not at all, right? Um, but no, and then it's not directed at you. It's not directed at you. No. I'm just saying, like, you know. If it was, it'd be okay. <laughs> yes. and right. I know that I have those walls. And, and we all do, yeah. to a certain degree. But I think that when you, when you get into, like, a power circle, like women who are really on the same page, wanting to do, uh, wanting to progress, wanting to better themselves, wanting to better their community, et cetera, and not in a superficial way, but really a, an authentic way, that there's going to be these huge vulnerable moments. And we've had you know, many students tell us that like, you know, I feel safe being vulnerable here. Or, And vulnerability, I think, is the space where major growth happens. Because yep. we can self-examine ourselves and say, yeah, you know what, like, I, I'm acting like a dick, or this, this wasn't cool, or I'm really struggling with this. And you have a safe, reflective community that will say, you know, like been there. Like I can, I can share, I can identify with that. It allows more vulnerability to happen, which then stimulates the next level of growth. Um, and I think that's a huge piece. The other thing, um, and I want to give a shout out to our sister Gianavati, who said. Um, I think she said in, in one of our telegram groups, she's like, you know, she, she tossed something out there. She's like, what do you gals think of this? And underneath it, this was probably a couple months back, I'm sure you remember, but she said, um, I see this group as an incubation group. Mm. Like when she wants to, whether it's, hey, should I buy this new product? Or 
um, I'm thinking about testing this out, or what are your thoughts on this? I think that power groups uh, that when they are on the same page, and you know, in our group, we tend to, we're focused on Ayurveda, yoga, spiritual practice, fitness, you know, really being um, empowered and uh, growing into who it is that we're meant to be dharmically. I think that having an incubation group is really fucking cool. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, I have this idea. And like, we've had business proposals come out of that. We've had, uh, you know, where people were like, you know, I have this business proposal. And, and you know who we're talking about. Yes, you do. Um, I had this business proposal, but um, you know, I kind of kept it to myself because I wasn't really sure, like, was this really a crazy idea? But then had the courage through being vulnerable in the group and saying like, hey, you know what, I'm tossing this out there. Like, what do you think? And everybody was like, oh my God, this is great. You know, so like so many things come out of it. Like so much creativity comes out of it. And I think that women that don't, have that like you got to get in you got to get in the yeah. circle you got to get in the circle join the circle and there's actually opportunities that are coming up as a result of that so any yeah. other thoughts on the value part uh the values also is it needs you need to have a group that is for the betterment of all yes. as well yes because uh, I, I think there's a lot of individuals that might be out there like, well, I'm a part of a group and we're, you know, authentic and, um, <laughs> are they though? Yeah. I, yet they're doing maybe things that are negatively impact their health or negatively impact their well being. And so that's really important. I think you really have to take a look at, again, maybe your inside and see, you know, is this group really for the betterment of my soul, yes. the betterment of my self? Um, who I want to be. Yep. Who I'm becoming. Be. And again, to, to go on with your point, like I don't want to be everyone else in this group just because I can be a part of the group that way. Right. Like you want a group that aligns with what, and that's why we got to start with who, who am I? Right. And, you know, break down a lot of those misconceptions of who we think we are. Absolutely. So. And to continue with that, I think also when you're, in a group that is a strong, empowered female group, there is that constant mirror. Mm -hmm. And eventually, like in the beginning, that mirror can be really annoying. You know, like, don't fucking put that mirror in my face. I don't wanna see that. I don't look at that. I don't wanna look at that thing in me. But then it just becomes part of your development and, you're just, and you become less, um, you don't, you move away from that sense of like, oh my God, you're attacking me, to like being completely and utterly honest with yourself. Like, yeah, I, uh, I'm i acting like a fraud, or yeah, I am speaking out of both sides of my mouth, or, and that's when the fine tuning happens. And yeah. we really get down to like the, the nitty gritty of, of our soul, and we can start to live soulfully from that point of view. Awesome, love it, awesome. You gotta get into female power group. So, yes, I'm going to shamelessly pitch this. So, the book, gotta read the book, From Pain to Power. So, we are starting the Shakti effect. Mm -hmm. The Shakti effect is get Pain to Power, read the book, then buy that book for a sister, give it to her, and then tell her that if she likes it, then she's gotta buy that for another sister. And it could be anybody, it could be literally, a biological sister, it could be your sister from another mister, mm -hmm. it can be your friend, it could be your colleague, it doesn't matter. Just buy the book and then buy one for a sister. And we have the Ayurveda 108 coming up. Yes, we do. Starts August 28th, and the Ayurveda 108 is 108 days of eight small practices that you can do every single day that are Ayurvedic in orientation, yogic in orientation, super simple. And you don't have to be somebody who's into Ayurveda or yoga to participate. No. The community that comes with it is absolutely amazing. We hold each other accountable in a very wonderful way. You meet women from all around the country, potentially all around the world. And we have empowerment talks, we have shared resources, we have Q&A forums. Mm -hmm. 
and it is absolutely my nice dress podcast all the time. Exactly, right. She's the podcast master, so <laughs> mistress. So you get all that information um, and it's fantastic. So we would love to have you join. Uh, go to the website, thewomanwarrioracademy.com and you can find out about the book, how to get the book on Amazon, and you can also see where how you can join the Ayurveda 108. And I think that's where we're at. And if the Ayurveda piece really interests you, go back and listen to this woman's um, past podcast. Oh, yeah. She goes into a lot of segments about Ayurveda that are wonderful. Oh, that thank is, you. Yes. It's good stuff and, yeah. and it's fun and it's fun. And like, we just, we have a really good time. Mm -hmm. So you can hang out with us hang out with other women, it's really cool. And if you want to join the Ayurveda 108 and you are local in the Boise Treasure Valley area, we also will have some pop-up events. We've got a um, fitness six-week program coming up. And um, yeah, there's a lot of things that are interesting. So if you are interested, check out the website, www.thewomanwarrioracademy.com or you can send us an email at support at satyavanirising.com. Um, or you can put a comment in the YouTube comments section when this gets posted. And I think that brings us to, you're already, you're already, you're already doing it, yeah. you're already doing it. It brings Same us thing. to our weekly tarot. And today's weekly tarot, because we try to use a different deck, is called Whispers of Lord Ganesha um, by Angela Hartfeld, Hartfield, excuse me, Hartfield. And Lord Ganesha is the remover of obstacles. So we chose this one today. Remove the obstacles out of your mind about what women's power circles are. Get into a really cool one. Join ours if you'd like. And which card did you choose today? I picked 18. 18. Openness. Ooh. So let me show you this. There's one. And Lord Ganesh. Openness. How appropriate is that? Mm -hmm. I swear to God, again, you can't make this shit up. So, openness, observe, evaluate, and make inquiries before forming a conclusion. Could not have been more lined up with this. I swear to God, these are randomly picked. Yes, they are. So, this is what it says When the moon is waning in the crescent phase, it is a good time to begin to review endeavors and correct mistakes. It is time to throw out what no longer need, what you no longer need, and clear away excess and old energy, including any clutter you may have accumulated. In addition to discarding excessive material things in your life, eliminate any unhealthy behaviors and relationships. Wow. Wow. You may find that you are trying to decide between two options. This card is not about making a decision, but more about taking the time to really listen to your heart and your inner voice. Ganesha advises you to gain more information before you act. <laughs> this knowledge can be in many forms, including your innate knowledge, self-knowledge, secret knowledge, or even more esoteric wisdom. You may find that what you are attaining might be both mysterious and magical. You are in a conscious process of creative release. Give thanks and gratitude for the things that you have accomplished. Don't feel rushed or pressured to begin a new undertaking. Review your goals and regroup accordingly. Once you have all the necessary information, you will begin to feel motivated to set some new goals and start new projects. Wow. Okay, Ganesha is removing the obstacle of you joining the Ayurveda 108, mm -hmm. joining our posse, being part of the Woman Warrior movement, and the Shakti effect, so. Yeah. Any last thoughts? No, I think that just said it beautifully. It's it really is looking, you know, inside the self and you know what are you really about and what circles are you in currently and looking at them. Yep. And seeing where you're at. Is that working for you? Yeah. How's that working for you? I love it. All right, my friends. This is Dr. Satyavani and Raja Madhavi. And we are going to say goodbye. And as always, Jai Bhagwan. Jai Bhagwan. May your soul be victorious. <laughs>